So hello, my name is Jamal and this is the Big O Belt Wrestling Podcast and I'm here today with one of the standouts of AEW, the guy that's been killing it. Pandemic happened, grind didn't stop for Danny Limelight. Danny, how you doing, man? Mi gente, Jamal, what's going on, baby? Thank you for having me on Big Gold Belt Media, man. I'm good. I'm chilling, man. Thank you so much, bro. How are you? Nah, I'm good, man. Uh, you know, making it making it good time. Uh, good. Thank you for having. Uh, take, thank you for taking time out of your day, uh, first and foremost. Uh, course, but number one, let me just go ahead and get into the questions real quick. Uh, AEW, you got the AEW uh, gear on right now, and you've been having a hell of a time in AEW for the past. It seems like a year. Now, almost, almost a year, be a year. Yeah, oh, right, right. So, uh, first question is not necessarily how you know you got into AEW, but uh, you, you wrestling some of your biggest shows uh, in front of a live audience, uh, some of your biggest shows that are being seen internationally. Uh, is that does that help or does that change your preparation for a match? Does that change your preparation to your um presentation at all knowing that so many eyes are on the product now no nah, man listen if it's five people or five thousand people i still perform like it's five million people you know what i'm saying every time i come out i come out to try to steal the show to, to have the best match possible to be somebody that people are talking about and, and that that people want to see more of you know i want to put on for puerto ricans everywhere i want to put on for latinos everywhere i want to put on for new york and I want to make sure that if there's any company, whether it be AEW or New Japan or, you know, any other company that, that's investing their time and money into me, that they're getting, you know, their money's worth when I'm in the ring. That that doesn't matter. Like I said, if it's five people or five million. Excellent. And and that, that actually shows the consistency. Uh, Dante Martin, Eddie Kingston, Konosuke Takeshita, which blew you all the way up um, on Dark. So, you know, whether it's on Dynamite and you've definitely made a presence there, Dark, Elevation, New Japan. Uh, all around the country or the indie scene, you know, definitely been putting in that work. So then also on the other side of that, you're into movies, too. You just yes. tweeted an hour ago that you saw Wrath of Man with uh, Jason Statham. Yes. You you liked it. I, I liked it, too. Uh, I know that you're a producer. Is that something that how does that translate into the wrestling side of things uh, from your acting side of things? Is there other things there are takeaways from either side? I mean, honestly, first of all, shout out to Jason Statham. I love the movie. You know, I thought the movie was cool. I thought it was different. Um, I, I, I love, I've always been a fan of Jason Statham. You know, his martial arts movies, action, you know, the action movies that he does and stuff like that. I feel like he always has these cool, innovative ways to go into things, to do things. And I think that, you know, myself being involved, like you said, in, in the acting world and doing my own stunts and things like that and writing and producing my own shorts, I definitely try to take a good bunch of stuff from Keanu Reeves and Jason Statham and those guys in the action world and, and, and use it in my stuff, obviously staying innovative and creative in my own ways, but it definitely transcends into the wrestling world, you know, because the way my brain operates in the ring is I always want to be innovative. I always want to be creative. I always want to have these, you know, this cinematic type feel, these cinematic type fights, these, this, this big match feel. This, this, I want it to be seen by millions of people, you know? And I think that like when, when, I, when I watch films like, you know, The Wrath of Man, or the John Wiggs, while I'm writing my own stuff, I'm thinking what the fans want to see, what would make them talk about it, you know? And so when there was when I was working on, you know, my recent film, Joe Riff, which is in yeah. the post-production right now, or if I'm wrestling in the ring, you know, I want to be creative, I want to stand out, and I want to ensure that the product that I'm that I'm putting out is, is top grade, top level stuff. And, you know, it, it, it's a blessing being able to have my hand in both cookie jars, in the wrestling world and, and film. Um, and you know, Wrath of Man, like, like, like those are the type of films that I want to be a part of. You know, I, I love the action franchises. You know, I love the Matrixes, the John Wicks, you know, the Transporters, you know, the Fast series, things like that. You know, so it's all good. Yeah, yeah no, it sounds good. Fast and the Furious in theaters Friday. You know, I, I know I'm going to be there. Uh, so I wanted, I will be there too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, uh, about Wrath of Man, you know, Guy Ritchie movie. It's not that it's just an action movie. It is a lot more thought-provoking. Uh, yeah. You do see a lot of different perspectives and a lot of different angles, and the story unravels like an onion. And I feel that is a parallel to a lot of your matches, particularly the one with uh, Takeshita. It wasn't just spot, 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 spot. It was like, no, this transition, this transition. Oh, my God, Wilbur German suplex for the win. How do you get the foresight to plan three steps ahead like that? I know you said that you, you think more cinematic like that, 
But yeah. how do you get the force? Like, do you go over with, with your, uh, you know, opponent? Like, you know, this is what I want to do, or you just kind of feel it out and and let them and let the match take you. I mean, honestly, the goal is always to win the match. You know, I want to go out there. I want to steal the show. I want to come out a winner. And to catch the man, shout out to Konoske. He's the ace of DDT Pro for a reason. He's a phenomenal yeah. athlete. It was an honor to be the ring with him. You know what I'm saying? To go out there and put on this this banger of a match. It was a special attraction match. In my opinion, it should have main evented the show that day. You know, it was it was that good. Yeah, um, it's probably gonna go down as one of the best elevation matches this year. You know. Yeah. Um, and I think that's when I really started calling myself. Well, or, or I think that's when people really started believing in the Monday Night Limelight thing that I was doing. You know. I think that's when people are like, okay, this guy really is the real fucking deal. And so, you know, we talk about the cinematic styles and stuff like that and the sequences and and, and, all, and all that kind of jazz that, that people try to interpret and break down when watching a wrestling match. But really, at the end of the day, it's it's going out there, giving it my all and, and making sure that whatever I'm doing is going to leave people talking. And I think that match left people talking for a while. People are still tweeting about the match. Yeah, because because it's absolutely fucking fantastic, and and, and I'm even amongst because it's just something that we haven't seen before on that level for free on YouTube, which is kind of like it's it's only it feels like robbery for real. Uh, so but so about that in particular, how does that you know knowing that that match does so well, but you have it in front of no audience, at what point do you realize that the match turned out as well as it did? Oh man, as soon as I got to the back. I mean, honestly, we had wrestlers sitting ringside, you know, the, the, sure. the extra talent and stuff like that, whatever you want to call them, the people that are, are, are trying to make a name for themselves as well. They were out there, right? Yeah. And, you know, in the middle of the match, I think Takesha popped me up and he hits me with this big ass power bomb and I kick out. And then I hear the crowd, like the, the wrestlers start chanting, this is awesome. And it felt so natural and so organic that I know if that place was sold out, it would have been insane atmosphere. Right. It would have been, 100% would have been insane. And, you know, so I knew right there, like, in the ring, like, this match is fire. And then when I got to the back and hearing all the positive feedback from the people that mattered, you know, I was like, hell yeah, we, like, we did that, you know? Me, me and Kanosuke, we did that, you know? That, and that's that's credit to him as well, being that damn good, you know? Absolutely. In, his first match, with me, somebody he's never met before, you know, and then we just went out there and it, it was just there. It was just magic waiting to happen. And as soon as the match aired, my Twitter was like going insane. And I was like, that was the one. That's my favorite match I've ever had. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, mine of two of yours. Another favorite match of mine of yours is between you and Miranda Alizé. And I know that you guys have mixed it up a couple, a couple times. Yes. Because it's an intergender match, and intergender wrestling seems to still be tab taboo in 2021, uh, what do you think it's holding it back from breaking it mainstream? Because you guys had a hell of a show. It wasn't yeah. about man versus woman. It was the match, and the wrestling spoke for itself. But yet, there still seems to be a hurdle to cross. Well, I mean, Miranda Alizé, you know, she's she's an up-and-coming star. You know, she's she's been she's been putting in the work on the independent scene. She's made appearances at the crash at triple a you know at ring of honor I, I believe she's done some stuff there you know AEW. Yeah. She, she's she's slowly you know creating her own you know path to where she wants to be in the wrestling business and the match was fun that was my second time wrestling her um the first time was in san diego and i was the winner this time she got the best of me um i think that it doesn't matter if it's male or female i think what matters is the wrestling and for people that watched it on title match you know um they saw a fun match, you know, it was a good, a good, good variety of stuff that was going on, a good taste of what a match between a man and a female can be like. And I think that we got the point across. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm a big fan of intergender wrestling because I think that uh, there's a story to be told. And if the two people, you guys are the artists, so just tell the story. Right. Don't let any of the other political hangups or any of that bullshit, you know, take away from the story. You guys are the artists. So. I want to see you guys, you know, do the work. Um, so, so yeah, I hope that that becomes more of a thing that stigma, those barriers, be broken down. And I, you know, thank you for that. And you know, while, we're talking, while we're talking about that match, man, by my record and my count, it's one one. So I think yeah. there needs to be some kind of tiebreaker match somewhere. I mean, a rubber match. You know, I mean, you know, people. 
I, I was just saying it's, it's obviously it needs to happen. You know, you're, you're kind of you're kind of the guy now. You know, I'm sure that you got some pull. We'll see. <laughs> well, well I, I will be watching. So, with that with that said, uh, Joe Reeves, uh, yes. when I know that you said previously in other interviews that it's in the final stages of post production. Uh, looking at the description of it on IMDb, I'm definitely getting some John Wick vibes. Yep. You saw Wrath, Wrath of Man, similar vibes. Equalizer, yep. similar vibes. Yep. Um, is that something, is that that type of genre that, that you feel that uh, is more of your uh, focal point, you know, for acting in general? Or is that just... Man. I think that, you know, First of all, me and Keanu Reeves share a birthday, right? September 2nd, we had the same birthday. Um, the film was definitely inspired by John Wick. Um, I think I was, when I was thinking of names for the character that I was playing, you know, I think John Wick, you know, Jason Bourne, Jason Statham, you know, all these guys have J's in their names, you know, like, uh, and it's just, so, it's just so sharp and crystal to the point. And I, and I think that I knew that I wanted my name to be incorporated somehow. My last name's Rivera, but I felt like Rivera was so long, so I just chopped off the second half of my name and just left it as Riv. And I knew I wanted a J name, so I went with Joe. And, and you know, when I watch films, I watch the study, the same as I watch wrestling, you know, I watch the study. And the things that I watch in these action films is the stillness in the character how still Jason Statham is when delivering a line or getting ready for a scene, how still you know, and relaxed Keanu Reeves is before whooping ass. Same thing with Denzel in his action films. And so when I was playing Joe Riff, you know, I, first of all, I went to the gym heavy. I, I gained a lot of weight for the film. Um, right now, I'm bigger than I was for the film. But at the time, I had to pick up 10 pounds for the film and, uh -huh. you know, so the preparation for that, the training that I did, the martial arts training, the weapons training, the hand-to-hand -hand combat, the hand on arm versus arm manipulation trainings that I had did, a lot of it came from the military. A lot of it came from just training with my fellow stuntmen out here in Los Angeles. And I think that when I was getting ready to, to shoot this film, I knew that I wanted to give it that John Wick feel, that, that transporter feel, that equalizer feel, you know, even, even watching Wrath of Man, there was a lot of things that Jason Statham did that I was like, yes, this is, very similar to how I carried myself in this film. And I'm very happy with it. We are in the final stages of post-production. And once we're ready for it to be released, I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch of podcasts to promote the film. Um, but I guess we could talk about it a little bit more. You know, we just wanna make sure the film's right. There were some yeah. things that we needed to fix that we fixed. You know, we didn't have to do any reshoots, so that's great, you know. Oh. Uh, I did everything out of my own expense, my budget. I did get some fundraising going to help with that as well. So it was an investment out of my pocket. I collaborated with Miko Sad, who's the director of the film, also yep. the owner of I4 Productions, um, the production company. So he helped produce the film as well. And, and, and honestly, just being able to work with all those amazing stunt people and actors and actresses that were on set, you know, we shot it in one day. That's not easy to do. You know, wow. we shot the whole film in one day. And, and man, I couldn't be more proud of it. So I'm, I'm hoping, because I'm, the only thing I'm seeing, of course, is the poster. Um, you looking like this is the second before some shit goes down. Um, <laughs> but I'm really getting vibes like Collateral with Tom Cruise or a movie that came out uh, uh, earlier this year called Nobody with uh, Bob Odenkirk. Uh, super slept on, similar vibes. If you haven't seen it, I, I highly I'm recommend gonna, it. I'm going to have to check that one out. I'm going to have to check yeah, that one out. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's on, uh, it's streaming now, but it was in theaters earlier this year, but similar vibes. I'm thinking like, oh. Man, it's basically, man, just to give a quick rundown of Joe Riv, you know, you get in the, the nitty gritty of it right now. Um, it's about, you know, a special forces military member who was KIA because of a top secret mission. So for three years, everybody thought he's been dead. Um, he comes back home because his sister is killed. And now he's, he needs to pretty much figure out and avenge his sister's death. So there's a lot of action in it. All the action in the film I choreographed, you know, all the, all the stunts, I did my own stunts. And I'm very proud of that because that's not easy to do. And, you know, again, it's just a testament to the stunt people that I had on set that was so easy to work with. You know, Nathan Peoples, who plays, you know, one of the one of the main antagonists and, and Daniel Masterson, who plays the brother of the main antagonist, working with guys like Blake Troop, working with guys like Laquan Bennett, you know, Jesse Ricaldi, Peter Kim, most importantly, Nick Herms, who's a big stuntman in, in Hollywood, has done films like Transformers and Mr. and Mrs. Smith and Three Kings 
And, and you know, lots of lots of those kind of big blockbuster films. He came on set second unit AD to help me coordinate and direct the stunts, make sure it was all shot right. Um, I'm super, super grateful to Miko Sad again, like I said, who directed the film. You know, he knew what my vision was and we did the best that we could, you know, bringing it all together. And I think that fans are gonna be very excited for this film. Obviously me being the guy that wrote it, starting it, produced it, for, you know, working on the backstage and the post-production with it with, with Safe, you know, who, who's uh, Creative Labs, an amazing, amazing editor, man. Shout out to them for working on this film and, and bringing it, bringing the life out of it by adding the cover and special effects and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and really, man, it's not easy. And so for me, I'm looking at it from a harder critique because it's my baby. I wrote it, you know, I was there and I've seen the process all the way through, but I think fans, they're going to get to see the finished product and they're going to be like, super super stoked to talk about it i'm so excited to see what it does in the film festivals and i really can't wait uh yeah and it seems to come along at a fortuitous time because theaters are starting to open back up the festivals are starting to be in person again uh you yeah. know things are starting to get back to normal so if this were a year ago uh-oh but now that we are a year removed you know and that, and on top of that you, you know it's, it's a crazy that you bring that up because originally when i shot this film we shot it in the middle of the pandemic we shot it june last year right oh, and wow. i was like I wanted to get it pushed out as soon as possible. And I'm so happy that we did it because like you said, shit wasn't as popping because of the pandemic. And also, you know, a year later, my fan base has grown almost double of what it was a year ago. And yeah. so that's more exposure, that's more eyes on this, that's more eyes on my team, the people that I've been working with, you know, actresses like Lauren Mendez, Jasmine Cooner, you know, Sarah Soler, you know, DJ Loudmouth, you know, who's a rapper who, who actually produced some of the music in the film and play the DJ in the nightclub. You know, uh, it's just, it's awesome when you get to work with amazing people who are passionate about what they do and just to see it all come to fruition. I cannot wait for everybody to see Joe Riv. It should be done by the end of this month. And the only reason why it won't be done is if, if, is if I nitpick the, the minor, minute details that I want fixed. Cause I want to make sure I put out the best product just like I do when I'm in the ring. Well, obviously, you'll have to hit us up when, when we get that when we Definitely. get that teaser trailer. When we Definitely. get that, uh, you know, that that, that screener invite, we're gonna we gonna need those because I'm gonna need to review Definitely. that. Uh, but yeah, so Joe Riv, look for it sooner than later, hopefully. But definitely yes. be on the lookout for it. Uh, one last thing before you know we wrap this thing up with a nice little bow. Um, I tweeted you, and this is something I don't do often, but when I heard your new theme song, Mi Gente, mm -hmm. I'm like, yo. <laughs> they gave a man a new theme. He's coming out. He's having banger matches. So with that, it seems that AEW is definitely putting you in the dare I say limelight. Uh, you know, a little bit more than a lot of the revolving talent on Dark and Elevation. Yet you got to be the hottest free agent in the game right now. Is that Fact. something that you are? You know, like not necessarily fighting them off with a stick. And I know that the big money long-term contract is the end game for everybody, but how do you manage that where it's like not necessarily waiting for the right deal, but the best deal while still enjoying your free agent status? Because honestly, if there's any way to do free agency in the sense that we're talking about with wrestling, it's the way that you're doing it with your hands in so many different pots. And I know that a lot of different companies can be a lot more restrictive. So how do you manage that uh, going forward? Your, your personal time versus... It's a blessing. Hey, man. Honestly, bro, like I'm super thankful, first of all, to Mikey Ruckus and Blast for, for the for the bang of a track. It's available on Spotify and iTunes. Make sure you guys go purchase it. It's called Mi Gente. You know, um, it's I definitely when when they were when they were coming up with my theme, I told them I wanted to feel that big pun vibe, that New York vibe, that Puriqua vibe, you know, and I felt like they did an amazing job at that. So shout out to Mikey and Blast. Make sure y'all go follow them on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and honestly, bro, like, I just want to grind, bro. I love the grind. I know, there's a film that I grew up watching called Paid in Full. And, you know, Money Making Mix was my, was my guy. Like, the way, he, yeah. the way he loved the hustle, the way he loved the grind. Like, that's me. I love the hustle. I love the grind. I love the streets. You know what I'm saying? And so the way I move, the way I do things, I do it for a reason. I do it with purpose. I do it with intent. The military trained me a certain way. I'm built different. Whenever I sign a major contract with a major company, wherever it may be, when it comes, if it doesn't come, at the end of the day, I'm always going to be good. And I'm going to make sure that whatever company I'm a part of is a company that I can offer myself to 100%, that I'm invested in, that I love, that I want to be a part of. I want to make sure that both parties, you know what I'm saying, 
it, it's, it's, it's a, a working relationship with both parties that, that benefits both parties. You know, I have a little girl I got to think about and I, I just can't wait to see it, to see it all yeah, play out. And, and obviously that work ethic has passed down to her because she's cashing checks at a very yep. young age too. Uh, so it, it's a generational grind right now. And, yep. and you know, if you get with it, you get ran over because, you know, the Rivera's are coming through. Big facts. We're breaking generational cycles and creating generational wealth. And that's, and that's the way it needs to be. You know, that, that's the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and expecting a different result. You have to be the change that you want to see. Yes, sir. So with that said, because of, we're speaking of the grind, we can find you, AEW Elevation and Dark, Dime Light, uh, all across AEW, uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Yep. New Japan Sorry. Strong. Shout out to the Bodega. We're the current United Wrestling Network Tag Team Champs over 200 days. You brought up New Japan Strong. Shout out to Team Filthy. We're the best thing on the show. Everybody listening, first of all, make sure you're following Big Gold Belt Media. Make sure you're tuning into Big Gold Belt Media's program every week. Thank you for having me. If you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Danny Limelight. ProWrestlingTees.com backslash Danny Limelight. Cameo.com backslash Danny Limelight. Not hard to find. I'm easy to work with. Hit me up for your podcast and, and whatever else you guys got going on. BGB, let's do this again, mi gente, real soon. Absolutely. Danny Light and Light, everybody, you find him wherever you turn on your TV and there's wrestling on, you know he's going to be there. You know it's going to be good. Danny, yes, thank you again, man. We'll do this We're again. We're going to do this again real soon. Real soon. Real soon. Real soon. Real soon. Real soon. All right, bro. See ya.